Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is a pick a card reading inspired and guided by these three doors you see up on the screen, these glowing portals. I'm going to give you a minute to look at these images and see which door, which portal is drawing you in. If you would like to pick directly from looking at the cards, I will have those up in a moment as well and everything will be down below in the description box for the timestamps. Okay, card number one, door number one. I'm getting a very interesting sensation for you guys. I'm really curious to see what comes through because I don't even have the, the picture of the doors up in front of me, but I can, you know, remember it in my imagination. And I know your door is, is taller and, and bigger and off to the side, kind of set apart from the other two. And I'm getting a very intense stabbing sensation in my left foot. I don't know what that's about. That's not the first time I've had that sensation in a, in a reading. I don't know what that means if that's from one of you <laughs> or if that's symbolic of something. So let's find out. I'm gonna get some extra, some tarot cards. I happen to be filming this on the day that Mars goes retrograde in Gemini, which is a little bit like a Mercury retrograde on steroids, and I'm definitely feeling it. <laughs> definitely feeling it. Everything feels a little bit out of order and just out of sorts and a little bit unusual. Unusual. We're also getting pretty deep into Scorpio season, so it's interesting. Okay, what is your Oracle card? Sword of Light, Divine Protection, Cords Cut, Breakthrough Energy. Oh my god, so this is like the Ace of Swords. This is the Sword of Truth. This is Excalibur. <laughs> this is also Archangel Michael, right? This is his, 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 his sword. This is how I always see this kind of um, sword imagery connected to Archangel Michael. So that probably means something to some of you. You are either... I can see you going through that door, right? I can see you going through that portal in, into, into a new land filled with light and you've recently been cutting away all of the cords of all of the attachments that have been dragging you down. All different kinds of attachments for each of you. Some of, the, some of you, it's like addictions and addictions doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, drugs. It can be other kinds of addictions, things that you were fixating on, things that you were desiring, things that you were longing for. You're freeing yourself from those. Not that everything that you desire is bad or something that you need to cut away, but there are some things that, that we all desire that aren't really good for us. <laughs> and especially that some desires can't move forward with us, right? So you've been freeing yourself from that. From some of you, this is freeing yourself from other people's energy, letting people drop out of your life, letting belief systems drop out of your life, letting old habits, ways of living. Definitely a lot of thoughts that are no longer serving you dropping out of your life. And it's interesting. So this is a timeless reading, right? You don't have to be watching this when Mars stations retrograde, but 
you know, this sword, this is air energy, Mercury retrograde in Gemini, that is air energy, <laughs> right? This ace, this ace of swords type of energy. This is so easily connected to Gemini, right? We can easily find analogs to figure out how to connect that to the thought processes. And so when Mer Mars goes retrograde in Gemini, we're rethinking the way we are thinking. Um, actually, dropping out of our thoughts and into our bodies, right? Because Mars is the body and our like primal energy, right? Dropping out of the thoughts and into our body. And as you can tell, I mean, if you watch many of my videos, I'm talking a little bit <laughs> differently than I usually do. Um, that's, that's part of this. It's like my um, mental energy is not as active as it normally is, which is nice. This is actually really nice, but it does seem a little bit strange. So, a little just a little aside here if you feel like you're a little bit strange or maybe some people are asking you like what's up with you you seem a little different it's just the pocket of energy that you're in right because dropping out of your mind and into your body and it can make you feel a little bit disconnected because you literally have been disconnecting yourself from many things in a good way right in a good way let's see what these tarot cards are <laughs> nine of swords the hermit Six of Wands in reverse. Okay. I want to know a little bit more about this Nine of Swords before I talk about any of these other things. Well, that's not easily visible. I'll just pile the cards up here. Why not? What is the Nine of Swords? Oh wow, I'm getting it. Now I'm getting a stabbing pain in my forehead. <laughs> stabbing pain in my forehead. So, uh, so this is like a, a, well, let me get the cards, I guess, before I, before I ramble. I, I really wanna be anchored in the cards, maybe more than usual the star okay i don't need anything else than that this is healing after your tower moment right healing being brand new um so what i was thinking of with the nine of swords is that, with the pain in my forehead is that this is a deprogramming of your mind right a deprogramming i think you're starting to realize just how much programming you've been susceptible to and not that that's your fault right it's just a fact of life on earth we've all been programmed and influenced in all kinds of different ways uh, and you already knew that before and you were already aware of that before but this is like a deeper level of this where you're going wow I was even more influenced and more programmed than I thought I was right um, so with the star coming out, the star is so closely linked to the tower card for me because it comes right after the tower, right? You have the tower, you have that big clearing, you have that big reset, and you're born again as the star, and that's where the healing comes in. So maybe some of you have recently had a tower moment. Maybe you've been seeing the tower card, right? Um, and that was to help, like, assist to clear out this type of programming. Um, I'm not going to get into detail about what type of programming because it's, you know, my main reason for using that word is so that you kind of know what I mean, right? It's all different types of programming and influences and anything that has been making you think, act, or feel in ways that are not genuinely yours. And you're, you're healing from that and you're really realizing that. And with these other cards coming out, I'm going to flip that Nine of Swords upside down because we're closing out that energy, right? We got the star on top of that. That's what we want. Um, with these other cards coming out, the Hermit and the Ace of Wands, in reverse. Uh, did I say Ace of Wands? Um, six of Wands, right? This is victory and success, but it came out in reverse. So <laughs> this is really, really Mars retrograde energy, right? Um, some of you are probably pretty okay with this, this energy. Some of you might be feeling really disappointed or like something has gone wrong or that you have failed at something or frustrated at some kind of delay. Um, because it's like victory was almost at hand. You were really striving for triumph. Like you were really wanting to, f maybe for some of you wanting recognition, wanting validation. Um, and you know, that's something I've been thinking about as well, where I've been realizing, cause I don't typically think of myself as someone who seeks validation. And yet I've been realizing lately the ways 
deep down that I do crave it and when I don't get it that, you know, sometimes I, you know, it ends up bothering me, right? It, I kind of get triggered, right? I kind of get triggered. So there maybe there was some kind of disappointment or a lack of success <laughs> that put you in this kind of six of wands reversed energy. But this is really, this is not bad at all. You're going to see eventually how this is really good for you. And this is part of the deprogramming because whatever you were striving for wasn't really aligned for you. It was a little bit distorted by your egoic desires, right? A little bit distorted, distorted by your egoic desires. Maybe, you know, you were trying to get some kind of business going, but maybe it wasn't fully, fully aligned with your soul because really you were just kind of hoping to make money at it. And of course you should and deserve to make money at whatever it is that you're doing. But you know what I mean? If, if money is like this unconscious driving factor that you're not really aware of, and if you're pushing for specific outcomes, it's likely not going to play out because th that thing is actually not going to satisfy you, right? And you will be most satisfied and have most victory when you begin the project or business or job or whatever it is that is fully aligned with your soul and will be fully satisfying to you every day. And that is the thing that will make bring you the money that you desire, right? So something might have fallen through, but also know that, you know, even if you're, it doesn't matter when you're watching this, right? You don't have to be watching it during the Mars retrograde, but there is, for whatever reason, right? Whenever you're watching this, there is this bubble of energy of a delay, okay? Of, of something being delayed. So I would say, no matter when you're watching this, for the next few weeks, There's going to be like a, like a couple of people watching this in the future, like in my future, where you're watching this when either Pluto or Saturn just went retrograde. And this, this, this delay might take all the way until those planets have finished their annual retrograde. So that's, you know, for a few people seeing this at some point in the future. But regardless, whatever's going on with you, there's some kind of delay and it's going to take for most people a few weeks, for some people a few months, right? Maybe up to five, five months. Um, but this is just a temporary thing, right? So if the delay is really bothering you, or if the setback is really bothering you, if the two steps forward, one step back is really bothering you, that's a feeling that used to really trigger me, right? Because it would feel like two steps forward, three steps back sometimes. <laughs> It, it it's it's okay it's just part of the process of the unfolding and it's to put you in this hermit energy right to put you in the hermit energy where you're really 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 tuning back into your own self so you're dropping out of all kinds of attachments all kinds of like energetic cords distractions all kind of crap this is all dropping away from you and you're being restored to yourself right being restored to yourself where It's like so many of the things you used to think or believe or do, you're going to you're going to be realizing that they were just things you picked up from other people. Now you're returning really really looking inwards and discovering who you truly are, what you truly, you know, that's not even really it. I was going to say what you truly think, but I think you guys are coming into a place where you're realizing it doesn't really matter what you think. Your thoughts are not what you thought they were. So this is even freeing yourself from your own thoughts, even freeing yourself from your own emotions coming into this I don't even have words for it, right? It's this blank space of awareness, just dropping into that, you know, if you meditate, if you reach deep states of meditation, you know that place where you're just dropped into this place of pure awareness is what this is about. You're being dropped into a place of pure awareness, of pure awareness where you look out at the world and you even look out at your own mind and you look at it, out at your own emotions and you can perceive your own thoughts and perceive your own emotions and you can perceive what's happening out there in the world, but you're in this place of just pure, pure, pure awareness and coming into the knowledge that that is what you really are, right? You're a point of awareness in the universe. So this is, you know, really having new experiences of non-duality, re really having new experiences of neutrality and just being a point of awareness in the universe where... Oh, it's such a big reset. It's such a big reset to the way that you think and you operate. So some of you um, could be feeling this 
in a in a kind of an unpleasant way like this this experience can be very 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 beautiful right the more you lean into your spirituality and the more you know if you like to meditate right the, the more the a meditative practice can really help you in this phase it's funny because i recently uh, in some other video in the last month i was on a big rant about how you know we don't need to be meditating every day anymore right we don't need to feel put any pressure on ourselves to meditate that is absolutely true right if you don't feel like meditating don't force yourself to meditate um but literally for myself just in the last couple of days i've been finding like oh I need, it's time for me to meditate again right it's time for me to go back into a phase of, me of meditating maybe not every single day but most days i'm going to be going back to meditating half an hour um and that's just a phase for me so maybe some of you are in the same kind of thing where maybe you used to meditate a lot and then you stopped and maybe now maybe maybe for some of you right maybe a phase of meditating almost daily is going to come back into your practice for a little while and then it'll cycle out again so it's getting in tune with those phases um so i'm talking about that because if you're if you're approaching this experience through a really spiritual lens and through like a meditative practice or if you like to do if you have rituals that you practice or any anything anything that it is that you do that grounds you in your spiritual practice that's going to make this experience feel really uh, like feel really satisfying and you're going to understand how it is really healthy and good for you and how it is this massive reset to your energy um it is possible for some of you that this is really unpleasant you could be feeling depressed right it could feel like dark night of the soul it could feel like you're like like you're stuck or stagnating or that you're experiencing too many losses or that you um are in this kind of dark void energy and you could be feeling really disconnected from your life or from others um because this is a, you know you you can experience this on a spectrum right it can this can this this is one type of vibration one type of experience you can be experiencing it in an unpleasant way or in a really beautiful spiritual way so i would say for no matter where you are in the spectrum It just it just kind of depends where you are in the spiral right where you are on the spiral and the more because this kind of pocket of energy that i'm describing here this big returning to self and having this big reset to your programming to your your mind into your emotions into your awareness into your energy this happens like repeatedly on the spiral path of your life right you, you go into this pocket of energy repeatedly <laughs> Some people more often than others but it is something that repeats for everybody and i think the more times you experience this and the deeper you've been like no i was gonna say because some of you who are really experiencing this in a challenging unpleasant kind of way it's not that you're less spiritual you are in fact all like deeply spiritual in whatever way that is for you right so that's not really it it's just about where you are on the spiral path, right? Where you are on the spiral path of this. That's the only way I can put it. No matter where you are on this, you can just, you can all, we can all, right? We can all benefit from dropping out of the concerns of the material world and again this is this is something that is a phase right that is a phase i'm it's really interesting listening to myself talk because this is a this is a shift in energy from what i have been describing over the past few months right i think for me and i think for a lot of the readings i've been doing over the past few months there's been a huge emphasis on like getting really grounded getting really into your physical life um you know being very human almost being like more normal than you used to be and and all of that um maybe because i you know i'm recording this in scorpio season right so we're getting pretty far away from grounded reality where the veil is very thin right now i'm actually recording this on you know uh, october 30th so <laughs> the the veil is very thin right so that's i think why we're now getting these messages that for whenever you receive this video you're in a phase of once again moving away from material concerns and the, the reason to move away from material concerns is that will be soothing to you at this time right at this time the your physical life might have challenges and worries and stresses and that is likely to be like overwhelming or, or to worry you and to make you feel like you don't know how to handle all of these problems like for those of you where you have lots of life challenges popping up it, it, everything can feel just too much right the world can feel too much right now so that's why at, for this phase right for this phase that we're in the fa a phase of grounded life will come back around but for right now when you receive this reading for at least a few weeks maybe a few months it's a phase of 
letting the physical world kind of drop away like not not so that you completely lose touch with it but so that you just allow it to soften right remember that everything in your earth experience is temporary remember that it's not really as big of a deal as you think it is <laughs> you know what however you need to talk yourself up around this and and just find ways to convince yourself that your problems aren't really as bad as you think they are right Yes, just, that is a problem. It's not It's not about like denying that it's a problem, but it's like going like, yeah, you know, this is a temporary problem, right? This is a temporary problem. And one day this problem will go away and everything's going to eventually be fine and everything always works. It's, it works itself out, right? Those, those types of ways of thinking. And then focus on your spirituality, right? Focus on your awareness. Um, some of you might even want to take steps to to like really even like aggressively step out of other people's energy. I actually just last night, right? I'm looking at this hermit card. Just last night, I uh, basically unsubscribed from almost everything in my, my YouTube feed. <laughs> and I, I only stayed subscribed to some music channels that, that I listened to. And it was actually kind of painful to do that because I have like, I, I follow so many like tarot readers and, you know, spiritual influencers that have like, and people who channel, right? All, and astrologers and all of this like wonderful content on YouTube. And that has brought me so much inspiration and uh, upliftment over the years. And, but suddenly I just felt like I had to do a reset, right? I had that I had to just tune out of the other voices for a while you know eventually eventually i'll phase out of this and i'll come back around and i'll resubscribe to everybody and i'll start watching you know youtube again but i felt like i needed to do an experiment for at least a few weeks where i just stopped listening to anybody else's like impressions right i just i just i just needed i need i just need this period where i don't have that kind of input right i just needed to really drop out of that um some of you you know man if someone's really serious about this you might even want to like take um, do like a vow of silence for a week or something. Wouldn't that be an interesting thing to do? I've never done that. That would, <laughs> or, or maybe for some people it's fasting, right? Or not socializing for a week or two or what, whatever it is, and, you know, turning off all of the news, what, whatever it is, different ways that help you tune out, right? Tune out, tune out of the kind of chaos around you so that you can hear yourself think, right? And so that you can actually, it's not even about hearing yourself think, it's about sitting in your place of awareness and just being aware of the fact that your human mind is thinking and going, yeah, there's that human mind thinking away and not really allowing those thoughts to touch you. So it, it's like, I think there's all, there's all of this um, emphasis here on dropping out of all of these other voices and all of these other influences because you're going to be working on filtering out like filtering your own mind, actually, right? Filtering your own mind and going, these thoughts, I don't ever need to pay any attention to these thoughts ever, right? I can't really stop my thoughts because we can't really control our thoughts. Nobody's very good at that, right? But we can go, I'm not going to listen to these thoughts. When those thoughts come up, okay, they're just over there yelling at me in my head, but I'm not going to listen to them. And as you just continuously go, I'm not listening to those thoughts. And this is also feelings as well, right? When you have feelings of you know, just knee-jerk emotional responses, <laughs> knee-jerk emotional responses that aren't really useful to you and aren't really helping you navigate your life in any way, right? This is sometimes where, you know, just as an aside, I think we all at some point confuse our emotions with our intuition because a lot of the time our intuition does speak to us with our emotions and yet <laughs> not all of our emotions are 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 part of our guidance system right sometimes our emotions are just a knee-jerk fear response right we had the nine of swords here if you're having fears and i mean it's scorpio season so this is when people can be having a lot of uh spooky spiritual experiences that you might be afraid of right um but fear the fear response that you might have to any life event or especially to any spiritual like mystical metaphysical experience the fear response, that is not all, that's almost never. In my experience, I have never had fear be an, in, be an intuitive hit. That's, that's not how my emotional, like my inner guidance system, that is not how my inner guidance system works. I can tell you that. That, that. That's all I can say is that fear is never part of my intuition. If I am truly being warned off of something, if, if my guides want to like, want me to know, like, don't, don't go that way. You're not going to like it. Right. It's always this feeling of like, 
almost like intense boredom. <laughs> I'll look at that, look at a possibility and it'll be like, just not for me. Not for me. It'll almost be this feeling of like, like a concrete wall. So everyone's going to be different, right? But I, I really feel that for most people, fear is not part of the intuitive guidance system. Fear is a knee-jerk response, right? But of course, these emotions that are part of our experience, right? It's not just fear. It's also feelings of resistance. Sometimes we feel resistance. It, like, say we're going to try and do something um, and we, we really feel this like intense resistance inside of us and it's easy to go, oh, I shouldn't do that because there's all this resistance. I mean, there is absolutely something to be said for following the path of least resistance and going that route and you can follow that paradigm and that is often a phase that you're in, right? But not always. Sometimes when you feel resistance, you have to go, where is the resistance coming from? Is this really telling me not to go this way or is the resistance, is it actually part of the meta message, right? Sometimes the resistance is actually an energy you're picking up from, from somewhere else. Maybe you're thinking of telling someone something and you feel a lot of resistance to this, but it might not be coming from you. <laughs> the resistance might be coming from somewhere else and you're kind of picking up on that. It's, it's really difficult to discern, right? Discerning the, the origin of resistance, very, <laughs> that takes practice, right? And you're probably going to make some mistakes along the way. But sometimes, sometimes when you're feeling resistance, what you actually need to do there is push through the resistance, right? Push through the resistance. So that, man, there, there's no really like shortcut on that. That's all something we all just learn through practicing, right? Sometimes when you feel resistance, that means slow down, stop. Sometimes when you feel the resistance, that actually means push through. And to a large extent, you know, it's up to you to make those choices and to design your reality and your experience through the choices that you make. So it's always possible, always probable that both choices can work out for you as long as you see them through, right? Anyway, got off of whatever I was saying originally. Now I have no idea what I was saying. Oh, so all of these things you're tuning out of, right? You're cutting the cords, you're cutting the cords, you're cutting away other energies. This is so that you're basically left alone with your thoughts, uh, alone with your mental body, alone with your emotional body, and alone with your inner guidance system. And this is helping you learn to follow your own intuition better, le learning to understand what your thoughts actually are and how most of them are useless to you and helping you understand when to follow your emotions and when your emotions are knee-jerk reactions that are actually just part of your biological human response to things, right? So this is really interesting. You guys are doing like, it might seem, <laughs> it might seem like when you're in this delay that not a lot is happening in your life, but this is a big, 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 inwards turning moment where you really learn how to operate yourself better <laughs> like learn how to operate your own body better like your consciousness and your body are becoming closer and they're learning how to operate more as a team and going forward once you get out of this um this pause right this this slowdown things are gonna be so much easier to navigate. You're going to have more confidence about moving forward. You're going to have less worries, less concerns, less, less fears. You're going to feel more courageous and you're going to feel just more confident in handling life, right? So right now you're kind of tuning out of life and really just tuning into your own energy. Eventually it will cycle back around where you come back down into the human physical life and you'll be like, okay, I'm ready for this. I got this. And you'll know when that shift happens, right? You'll feel it because you'll be like, my feet are back on the ground. I have all of these, um, does like this, I'll have all of this energy that I'm ready to put forward and work into my physical life. And you'll, you'll be excited to work on projects. You'll be excited to do the housework and do grocery shopping and like do tasks, right? You'll feel your energy come back into your body. So really, I would say, try to enjoy this inward slowdown as much as you can, because the more you really just like <laughs> give into it and absorb as much as you can from it, ah, like make the most of this time, right? Make the most of this time. It might be kind of boring, might be kind of slow, but you can really reap a lot of great rewards from this. So that's what I got for you. Reading number one, sending you guys so much love and light. Bye.
Okay, reading number two. <sighs> Your energy feels a lot brighter, more spectacular, actually, is the word uh, that wants to come to my tongue. I feel my energy shifting drastically from the first reading. So my voice is brighter. I feel lighter, shining like a star, spectacular. <laughs> okay, let's find out what we got for you guys. Third eye activation, brow chakra, inner vision, clear seeing. So <laughs> right off the bat, guys, third eye activation. You guys are... I'm almost like at a loss for words <laughs> because the third eye... So some of you, this is going to be playing out literally in terms of seeing. So you could be suddenly receiving visions, right? Like your third eye is opening and you are seeing things and really trust your imagination at this time. I've had a lot of people ask me or just kind of tell me like, I think there's something wrong with my third eye. I don't see, like I don't receive visions in, you know, with my eyes wide open. I see them in my inner vision, right? I see them in my inner vision. Is there something wrong with my third eye? Oh my God, no, there's nothing wrong with your third eye. So there's a whole spectrum to third eye opening, right? And for most, the vast majority of us, even those of us who are spiritual and are psychically gifted and are intuitive and all of that, still for the vast majority of us, like third eye seeing, right? Seeing visions, seeing images, receiving stuff like that. For the vast majority of us, that happens in our inner vision. So like, what is your inner vision? That's just your imagination, right? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your imagination is your psychic perception, right? Your imagination is your psychic perception. If you're like staring out the window and you're zoned out and you're kind of seeing something in your imagination, right? That's that's third eye seeing, right? That's third eye seeing. So somebody, I think more than more than one person here, right? A few people really need to hear like, if you're just seeing things and it feels like it's just in your imagination and you're going, did I just make that up? No, you didn't just make it up, okay? <laughs> like, yes, it is possible to like, create images in your own imagination. We do that all the time, but it, it is equally possible to be, be receiving images and to be seeing in your with your imagination, to see with your imagination. And the more you trust that, the more you go, okay, I saw this in my imagination. I saw it and I saw it in my inner vision. I saw it in my inner vision. Then it kind of steps up the next level, right? If you're one of the vast majority of people who's going through a long, slow step up process of opening your third eye. Like, yeah, some people are born and they're seeing visions and ghosts and spirits and, and angels and aliens and all that kind of stuff from when they were babies and, they, and it never stops their whole lives, right? Some people have that. Some people have really rapid third eye awakenings where suddenly they're like seeing everything. Um, yeah, that does happen, right? But that's not for most of us. So most of us are on this long, slow third eye awakening process and you know, so it begins by seeing things in your inner vision and it feels like it's just your imagination. And then it becomes um, clearer, like a lot more vivid, right? Where it's almost like seeing it with your eyes wide open, but, but, it, but you can like really, really, really see much more vividly in your inner vision, like the image that has been sent in. It starts to look different. It starts to look distinct, right? And I mean, in this whole process, this can be different for everybody. I'm basically describing how it goes for me. I'm, you can be different, right? But <laughs> I've only had my experience. So, you know, the visions start to get more clear and they start to be more obvious and you can start to go, wow, okay, I am seeing something. I am receiving this image, you know, and maybe you start to see things when you're half asleep, right? Just barely falling asleep or just waking up and it's not quite, not really a dream because you're not really asleep, right? And then it gets to the point where you start seeing things just like literally right in front of you, right? And you could go, am I hallucinating? Is that a hallucination? And I mean, that's a whole conversation we can have, the difference between a spiritual vision and a hallucination. Right? <laughs> that, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> but, uh, how, how do I even articulate my, is there what, can I quickly articulate my thoughts on that? Because I've had both. I, I have, I've I'd received spiritual visions and I have hallucinated, like straight up hallucinated. Um, why do I call those different things? Basically, it's a, to me, I, I'll use the word hallucination when, when I am not of a clear frame of mind. Like once I had, um, 
steroid induced hallucinations like I was on uh, prednisone right I had to take prednisone for like a medical emergency I was on prednisone and that made me hallucinate so I called that a hallucination because it was like induced by a prescription medication right um other times I was just so off my rocker <laughs> I was just so crazy right um sure it was still a spiritual experience right it was still a spiritual vision it was still a spiritual experience but I tend to call it a hallucination when I was like totally crazy I was totally crazy so to me it's a hallucination but if I am you know, in my right frame of mind, if I'm clear, if I'm grounded, if I feel good and I, you know, and, I, and everything is right with me and I feel balanced and I feel connected and then I see a vision, then I call it a vision. Um, it's all on a spectrum. It's all basically kind of the same thing, but I don't see anything wrong with using two different words for two different kinds of scenarios there. This, that's a long conversation we could go on with, but I'm going to leave that aside, but maybe that is food for thought for someone. Okay, let's get some more cards. What is going on with you guys? Queen of Cups. So more intuition. So it's not... Um, oh, so I've been talking all this about seeing, right? But your third eye isn't just about seeing. Your third eye is about all of your intuitive interfacing, <laughs> I would say. Not maybe not all of it, right? Not all of your intuitive interfacing, but a lot of it. Because it also includes clear audience, right? Hearing, hearing your guides, having your ears ringing weird pressure popping in your ears, all that kind of stuff. That's your kind of ear chakras basically trying to come online and be activated so that you can receive um, more audible messages. Um, but your third eye is also your higher mind, right? And this is where, again, everyone's going to need to start trusting <laughs> so much more that the thoughts, a lot of the thoughts that are in your head, that go through your head, are intuitive messages, right? Um, especially when you're just kind of zoning out, and you feel pretty clear, you feel pretty just kind of relaxed and zoned out, and then a thought just kind of pops up in your head, or a song just kind of pops up in your head, right? That, that was, that's a communication from some interdimensional being. It is. And you got to start noticing that and trusting that, and the more, because the more you trust it, the more that starts to happen. Knight of Cups, so much water, Queen of Cups and Knight of Cups. So this even concerns what I was saying, right? It's talking about receiving messages. The Knight of Cups is a, is a messenger, right? You are receiving messages through your intuition. This is like, this is all about some kind of psychic awakening for you guys, okay? Um, also, with all this water energy, the empathic element here of... Of how intuitive you are it's because it's not all about seeing and hearing right and receiving messages it's also about you empathically reading people and you empathically reading a situation and you using your hmm, how do i want to put it uh, in the first reading uh, i had a whole ramble about how your emotions aren't always intuitive nudges right sometimes your emotions are misleading and your emotions aren't always intuition but for you guys <laughs> you you i think are already understanding how to navigate your emotions and i think you guys already understand you already understand that like you can discern you guys can discern and if you watch both readings and they both resonate then it's like you're really learning here how to discern that how to discern when to separate your emotions from your biological emotional reactions to your empathic abilities i can i can really really easily see somebody you know talking to someone else and feeling their feelings and knowing that it's their feelings and using that like as a skill um some of you i feel like you have this potential to even do like empathic readings just like straight up empathic readings um, where, you know, you, you don't use cards. You're not even particularly channeling. It's not like you're communicating with your guides in an obvious way. You're always communicating with your guides, but this way I'm talking about it's not obvious, right? You're not like on the, on the telepathic phone line with them, right? Um, and you're not necessarily accessing the Akashic records or anything like that. You're you're just feeling the other person's feelings, feeling their emotions. And it's like you have this ability to... Like, see their entire emotional body. 
to see their entire emotional body, how it works, how it fits together. If man, you guys would be like fantastic therapists, counselors, anything like that. Holy crap. Um, and there's a huge potential here for you guys to actually learn how to help other people heal their emotional experience help other people heal their emotional experience because it's like when you interface with their emotional body and you your system kind of mirrors and mimics their emotional body because it's like you can you like entirely mirror you entirely mirror their emotions but it's like you can be aware that you're doing this there's something about you guys where you don't get confused about is it your emotions or their emotions you're very clear like no that's these are their emotions i'm feeling them but these are their emotions these are their emotions right and you know the difference and you when you're interfacing with somebody else's emotions if you can hold a frequency a high frequency and you guys have the ability to do this right you really have the ability to do this you can go no i'm not going to let myself be swamped and overwhelmed and overridden by these this other person's emotions i'm going to hold my high frequency right it doesn't even if they're like crying and in despair you're going to hold a high frequency state and that will help that will like behind the scenes energy work right all the behind the scenes energy work however that happens it's going to be going on where higher dimensional beings and this other person's higher self can go in and like adjust their emotional body tune their emotional body and you're essentially the tuning fork you are the frequency holder you are the tuning fork so when you guys are around people who are having intense low vibe emotions hold high frequency right do not let yourself get overwhelmed like don't come down to their level because uh, you guys are so empathic it could be really easily for you to like somebody's having a bad day now you're having a bad day too it's like no they're having a bad day you have the best fucking day that you can possibly have that is the best thing you can possibly do for them because you are the tuning fork <laughs> you are the tuning fork for them and that is how their emotional body can be can evolve, can shift, can change, can heal, and can start to be more like yours. Page of Swords, we have this Page of Swords actually climbing this mountain. This is <laughs> rising above it all, right? Looking down <laughs> on the city down below. I kind of feel like that's it for this reading. I know the first one was so long and this one is like much shorter, but you know, somebody actually just came home and I heard the door close and I was like, that's confirmation, exactly what I needed, right? The door is closed on this reading. So I don't know, <laughs> this one is short and sweet, but I will draw you one more card just to get you like a final kind of message here. I close my eyes when I shuffle for these so that I do not see what I'm grabbing. There's the one. Speak it into being. Speak it into being. Speak words of jubilant affirmation into your life. You can create happiness through an inner state of mind first. Practice by repeating to yourself, I accept good in every form, or I am well loved, or everything works out for me. In planning for your future, start where you find yourself right now. Outer circumstances do not have to define you. Experiment with how different thoughts affect your well-being. Dismiss words that amplify suffering and misfortune. Cast aside the illusion of fate, the belief that your life is predetermined. If you do so, you are no longer living in what could have been, but rather you are entering into the possibilities of what you can become. All right, guys, that's what I see for you. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Card number three. What do we got for you guys? <laughs> okay. The Akashic Records. Clearing old stories, releasing past lives, and freedom. So, <laughs> something that's been happening in your life has been directly connected to a past life. You are reliving, re-experiencing some kind of energy, right? That you have lived before. <laughs> you have lived this before. Some of you, this is like literally <laughs> something that you've lived before. Like 
you're literally reliving it, like the, the, the very, very similar type of situation. Others of you, you could be reliving this through, like if you're a writer, right? You could be writing a story that, and you're working through it that way, right? You're working through your past life thing that way. Others of you, maybe you, you see a movie or you watch a play or just something, some type of, it could be happening in like the art, some kind of artistic scenario, right? Where you're reliving something. Um, or if you have just a scenario playing out over and over in your mind, right? A scenario looping in your mind. This is replaying something from the past, but you're going to be freeing yourself from this, right? Releasing the past life and of the past lives and clearing old stories, clearing old stories. If you feel worried about something bad is going to happen. Oh my God. So this is huge, right? Um, Oh, so often, right? So, so often when we have, when we are convinced that something is going to happen in the future, or, you know, even if we're just, we're not convinced, but we have a very strong intuition. Sometimes we have intuition about what's going to happen in the future, right? A lot of the time, that's actually because that thing has happened to us in the past. And we're basically taking the past and projecting it into the future. You, I mean, we do that, of course, all the time on a basic human level, but this happens really, really, really on a soul level, on a cosmic level. If you, you know, I'm sure you're all aware of the various, you know, different predictions that people have about what might happen on Earth in the next few decades, right? Uh, so much of that is people remembering what has happened to them on in other lives, in other planets, even in other versions of like earth, right? People who, people who have lived in, it's like multiverse bleed, right? Multiverse bleed through the, these experiences that we've had in these other, other lives, other planets, other timelines, other versions of earth. Like there's so many different ways this can go. It's bleeding through. And it's like, it happened in that when, in that where, and then we start thinking that it's happening now. <laughs> of course, it, we can recreate that experience for ourselves. That is something everyone can do, but that's not what this is about, right? This is about not repeating the past. This is about this time it works out, right? This time it works out. The last thing I'm going to do is going to read you this message from this book, but let's see what these cards are. Did I have all of these upside down? Well, how did these get upside down? I just, I must have just messed this up. Or, no, I had the whole deck upside down, and there was just one card <laughs> that was upside down, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm just going to flip these up, and we'll just take this as a little bit of energy work, right? Changing our minds, <laughs> setting things straight. What do we got here? <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune, right? Everything is shifting and changing. Everything is all connected. Multiverse bleed through. Look at the spider's web, right? You're in the spider's web and you know how a spider knows that when a fly has gotten caught in the web, it's because she can feel it vibrating the, the web, right? Vibrating the string. So you guys are really, really, really sensitive to the multiverse, <laughs> to your not just past lives. This is not just past lives, right? This is parallel lives. This is other iterations of earth. This is other timelines, right? So many different ways of looking at it and you're very sensitive to that and you're, you're feeling things that are happening in other scenarios, right? You're feeling things that are happening in other scenarios. Um, so there is a challenge for you guys to really separate yourself from that, to separate yourself from those other scenarios. It's not that you need to stop sensing them because it's actually really cool that you're able to sense them. It gives you these windows into the multiverse, right? These windows into all these, all these other infinite possibilities, right? I always feel that this is an infinite multiverse, right? If something can happen, it will happen. If everything, everywhere, all at once, right? So you're really tuned into all of these infinite possibilities. But when you are that open and that, like experiencing this multiverse bleed through effect, it's like what's happening in your life right now? Like what is happening in your actual life that you are living through, right? Your linearity, your linearity. Well, first of all, you guys aren't very linear. That is how you are able to be tuned into all of this multiverse bleed through. Um, 
but there, there's going to be a challenge here for you not to get lost in that, right? To be <laughs> the empress, to find your sense of stability, your sense of sovereignty, your sense of centeredness in the multiverse. This is really huge because this means that your consciousness is evolving to the point where you are essentially higher in frequency than you were. You are, if you, if you like the 5D ascension language, this is the you like getting closer to 5D, right? You are like ascending up the, the, the ranks of the frequency bandwidths um, and you're becoming more expansive and more multifaceted as you go. Um, but in order to really leave your linearity behind because your linearity right your linearity your this idea that you are this one body through this one linear timeline that really protects you it protects you from the chaos of all that is right it protects you from the infinite possibilities because you could really get lost in that so how do we know, how do we walk out into the unknown how do we walk out into the infinite universe the infinite multiverse without getting lost you need to be grounding into the self right? Grounding into our own selves. Man, this is something I used to talk about, I think a lot earlier this year, or was it last year? It's like, instead of grounding into your linearity, even instead of grounding into the earth, although grounding into the earth is still something you want to do, but that's kind of a separate thing, right? Right now we're talking about grounding into your own self, grounding into your own heart chakra, get grounding into your own center, make yourself your own center point. You are your own sun. You are your own point of orbit, right? You are all that you need. And that that is so important because you're not going to be able to have experiences of astrally traveling the multiverse or going out into the quantum or like leaving this universe you, you can't you, you're not going to be able to do that unless you are fully fully grounded in your own energy because there's nothing to anchor you out there you're like lost at sea right so you need to know how to navigate the stars right you, you need to and you need to know that like your 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 soul is your ship <laughs> your soul is your ship and you have everything that you need in this ship and it's like your soul isn't just like an old tall ship on the sea, right? Your soul is like this incredibly advanced spaceship that has infinite renewable resources, right? You have all of the water and air and food and entertainment that you need, right? All inside of your own self. So yeah, <laughs> this is huge. Um, I hope I've like, I hope I've impressed upon you how important it is to be able to be anchored into your own self because the higher levels of your consciousness the parts of you that go out into the quantum if you're like that the experience of going out into the quantum will be like you will be protected from that unless you're ready for it right and to be ready for it you need to be able to be fully fully self-contained fully fully anchored into your own self otherwise you will just go out there and be shredded by the quantum wind so to speak right so finding your own sense of sovereignty in chaos and actually if you're experiencing a lot of changes and shifts and uncertainty in your life yeah that's basically training you know how the last couple of years on earth everything has kind of gone totally crazy right everything it's like we have this constant experience of chaos and we have this lack of certainty lack of stability that's i see that very very literally as as training it's like boot camp because we can't when we go out into the quantum we cannot expect to find anything stable anything not like nothing is stable nothing is certain the whole cosmos the whole multiverse is just and beyond the multiverse is just constantly shifting and changing and it is whatever you make it it is whatever you make it and so this is ha having an earth experience where everything is crazy and up in the air and shifting all the time and you can't depend on anything being the same and you feel like there's no firm ground beneath your feet that is training because that is what it's like to go out into the universe right <laughs> And to be clear, all of you watching this, you it's not like you're experiencing this for the first time. <laughs> you you have already been out there in the quantum. You've already been out there. That that is actually something that your soul already knows, right? But it's like your the part of you that is in your human body is getting reacquainted with this whole experience, with this whole idea, and you're basically teaching your human self to be able to hold that kind of state of consciousness, this ability to go out into the quantum and be anchored in your own self and navigate the universe that way. 
that's a state of consciousness and you're trying you're trying to anchor that into your human self yeah page of swords in reverse and the two of wands <sighs> yeah i mean i don't have anything specific to say about those cards really i want to maybe i'll just show them to you page of wands she's standing on a mountain looking down i was in reverse right <laughs> which way's up the sky is beneath your feet right <laughs> it's two of wands to the two-headed person here look at that experience of it's interesting it's like it's duality but is it is it duality or is it non-duality <laughs> is what is what, I, is what I think when I see this because we have one being with two heads right one being with two heads I'm not I'm not even gonna get into it I just wanted to show you <laughs> okay where is it here we go I will just read the part about your message here. When you draw this card, the universe is releasing you from past experiences. These can be soul-based memories, fears from previous lifetimes, or older aspects of this current lifetime that you have moved on from. Know that this is the time to reclaim your freedom and rewrite your story. You can do this by following through on your dreams. Gone are the days of fear-based indecision. This is the time to rise up and claim your truth. If you are sitting on a dream or are feeling called to move in a particular direction, it's because you have unearthed an important soul lesson. And it is essential for you to follow that call to clear unwanted energies of your past. As you do so, don't allow yourself to be pulled into expecting the worst possible outcome. Know that this expectation is not your truth, but old energy being released from your energy body. Call in angels to shine their light on any repressed fears, energies, or stories that are no longer serving you. It's time to fly high in freedom. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.